people, thanks for joining me for another edition of This Old Gibson. I'm Scotty D, and this is where we do wacky stuff to old Gibsons, Fenders, Guilds, and Gretches, Martins, and Taylors. This one had a little blowout here where the uh, instrument cable goes in, the output jack, it got all squished and bent and destroyed. It's got a great sound to it. So let's uh, take all the electronics out and fix this up. I went online to look and I couldn't find a single one in this color. Oh man, the mud bucker. That thing sounds nasty. I couldn't figure out if it's 65 or 67 or maybe even a 73. Serial numbers are hard to figure out from that though that era. But maybe if when we turn it around to take all the electronics out, we'll see that we can date the pots. So looky there, you got the CTS number. 137 means CTS, and then 66 is the year. from what I understand. And to fix this right, I told him I was going to have to pull all the electronics out. I don't know if it's been fixed before, but that almost looks like a little mahogany plug of some sort there. That brown mahogany that doesn't have the paint on it. Looks kind of weird, doesn't it? I think it's been molested many times. Get the jack out of the way and maybe I won't have to tape, pull everything out. I might have enough room to get the foot of a clamp right down in there to hold that in place while I glue it. Pretty cool looking checking lines there. Yeah, this old glue that was used in here that failed was a rubbery type of glue like type on, which is not good because it's too flexible. And this needs to be rock hard. So I'm going to use some hot hide glue, which as you know, dries rock hard. Rough up these surfaces. Sure the glue can soak in. And it should fit in like this. It's not pretty, but 
we put it back in there. And we'll wedge something in there, kind of hold it tight. Maybe a reamer. There's the glue pot. What I did is I, uh, I wedged that piece in there and then I wedged this stepped drill bit into the hole to kind of jam it into the corner. And then I dropped in a whole bunch of extra hot glue because there is actually a bunch of voids. I used this brush to kind of drop it in. And then I'm thinking, well, we'll just see. I'll come back tomorrow and I'll see how I'm, I might be able to reinforce this whole area. And this is the whole setup right here, the little Lee Valley hot high glue pot with a little um, burner from Walmart, and a little pot of hot water, a little more hot high glue right here. After a few hours here, now there's a little, there's a little glue. Glue can't evaporate when it's trapped in plastic like that, so it can be cured down inside of here. But the little bit that was on the surface, will wipe right out. So. Here it is with one of those new pure tone jacks. Solid as a rock. I think I'll wire this into the circuit and reinstall the pickups. And there she is, all soldered back in place.
So this carbon fiber sheet stock material is 1.5 millimeters thickness. It cuts okay on the bandsaw. I just did this little cut right here. First I took that paper template and I glued it on there with super glue, cut it on the bandsaw, shaped it on the disc sander, and I'm talking about the drill press disc sander from String Tech. And that seemed to work pretty good. Now I couldn't drill a hole with it through it with a with a normal wood a drill bit. Those uh, just they don't do anything really. They just go dull immediately. So I used this um, diamond little burr on the Dremel and wore a mask and gloves. And I kept the uh, vacuum cleaner handy. And I kept I punched through and then I just went in circles till it was just the right size for the output jack but it took a while it took a uh, five or ten minutes of going around in circles with this thing that was the unexpected part but the result is worth every minute of it just try to keep that carbon fiber out of your lungs and off your skin if you try anything at home with it you know if you ever give it a try just be aware of that dust that little black dust is really fine it gets everywhere you gotta wipe it up well, and also the other thing about the carbon fiber sheet stock is that I roughed up the surface on the disc sander while I was out there shaping it. And that way the, uh, the ultimate wood glue could stick to it. Now, typically type bond regular, original type bond and type bond two probably not so much do as good as this stuff does with uh, plastic and stuff like that. Well, anyways, that was the glue I used and I clamped it and left it for about five, six hours. Usually you're okay just waiting two or three hours with this stuff. That'd be plenty of time. And now this jack is a permanent kind of clamp right there. It's it's holding the, the wood from this side and the carbon fiber from that side and you got a layer of glue in there. So that, there's no way that's ever coming loose. Anyways, this, this guitar has worse problems. Then a loose carbon fiber. Oh man, this guitar. It is beat up from the feet up. Let's have a listen. Have you hear it? That's the mud bucker. Even muddier with the tone off. Okay, here's the bridge pickup. I think out of phase or something. And then maybe in phase. Well, mud buckers full. I'll catch you guys later. See you next time.